Hello everyone, this is Jonah Dempsey. I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The infamous St. Francis right behind me. And I'm on the Santa Fe River Trail. Just gonna be walking over to the rail yard to catch diggable planets tonight. Excited about that. And I had a few minutes to talk about attitudinal psyche, a system developed by Rob Zeke Kalapi that came out of Psyche Yoga, which is an obscure Russian typological system. This is a cog function system. That is, it is a cognitive function system along the lines of objective personality, Myers-Briggs type indicator, Jung's four function model, John Beebe's eight function stack, the Grant stack, all this stuff, um, socionics. And yet it is an interesting way of looking at the cognitive functions and there may not be a one-to-one -one mapping. If you're studying socionics, it has a one-to-one -one mapping to Myers-Briggs. If you're studying Myers-Briggs, it has a one-to-many mapping to OPS. It's one-to-one it's -one at the level of 16 divisions, but there are many subtypes of each of these divisions. If you're studying cognitive type, it pretty much has a one-to-one, -one, arguably, mapping to the objective personality system for the most part, at least at the higher level divisions. Some of the subtypes arguably cross-cut the objective personality divisions. When you're looking at attitudinal psyche, which we're looking at today, it is an open question whether there is a mapping to other systems like objective personality. They are using the same, so it's the same fundamental building blocks, but it's looking at them in interesting ways. I do hope to do a whole series on attitudinal psyche, teaching it using its own terminology. That is not this. What we're gonna to do today, uh, by the way, wow. Sorry, some new random I had to show. That's just beautiful. So what we're gonna to do today is um, instead of teaching the system in its own vocabulary, I'm going to describe how it's structured using terminology that we're all familiar with from the other cog function systems. Sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling. In attitudinal psyche, they call sensing foundation or physics, and it has the symbol F. They call feeling emotion, and it has the symbol E. It's like, thanks a lot, guys. We've been using F for feeling for, what, 100 years now? And, uh, and you guys just happened to want to change it, so now it's E, and that F actually means sensing. Great. Um, they use L for logic, and they use V for intuition. L is logic thinking. V is volition, their preferred term for intuition. Kind of an unusual change, but it does make sense when you get into it. So, okay, attitudinal psyche. Same fundamental for building blocks. Thinking, feeling, sensing, intuition. They call them logic, emotion, physics slash foundation, and volition. But it's the same basic stuff. It's the same fundamental building blocks. But here's the thing. They're doing something very interesting with them. They've created sextas, kind of like we have quadras from Socionics, or we use quadras in Myers-Briggs. We use quadras in the objective personality system. Quadra refers to the introverted and extroverted attitudes of the functions. In attitudinal psyche, there's no such thing. They're not looking at things that way. Now, by the way, when I say there's no such thing, what I mean is this model does not model that. It's my firm belief, just to kind of take a little, you know, philosophical look for a moment. It's my belief that what we're doing with typologies is we're creating models that are explanatory systems using a vocabulary, using a taxonomy, and that these explanatory systems are more or less productive or useful. So it's not the question of which one is true, it's the question of which one is accurate, and not even which one is accurate, which one is both accurate and useful, because you can have some very accurate statements that are totally unproductive and useless. I am told by socionics that this is an aspect of my quadra, that my quadra is obsessed with rationale and questions of productive versus unproductive. 
So perhaps other quadras and other types may believe that typology is doing something different. But for me, the project of typology, regardless of if it's attitudinal psyche or Myers-Briggs or any of these, their project is always the same. Let's create a model. Let's try to fit it for the data so it's not overfitted or underfitted. Let's try to make it scalable and testable. Let's see if we can actually reproduce with accuracy the same results. I love that, you know, objective personality uses some very good patterns that their students have picked up on so that they get the same results. Unlike systems like cognitive type, which have tried to codify the patterns, but kind of failed in my opinion, uh, because their model is not fitted correctly to the data. Like, you know, they're testing for feeling, but they think they're testing for FI versus FE, but really they're testing for both. They don't realize it, they get false positives, they get false negatives. Uh, because the pattern is not matched to the category that it's matching for. Like, it is a real pattern, it's just not matched to the right box, basically, in cognitive type. Whereas objective personality has done a great job of tracking scalable patterns and matching them to the right box, the right category. Okay, so back to attitudinal psyche. So what is attitudinal psyche doing? Um, they have these same four basic constituents that we use in all cog function systems. And they're breaking them into sextas, which are kind of like temperaments with a key difference. Well, first of all, we have to say, what do we really mean by temperament? The term temperament means something different in objective personality than it does in Myers-Briggs. Myers-Briggs also, the temperaments are NF, NT, SJ, and SP, which is like, that's from Kiersey, right? David Kiersey, please understand me, all that stuff. And um, I see why he split it up that way, but it's kind of annoying. The other way of splitting it up is simply NF, NT, SF, ST. That makes a little more sense to me because it's symmetrical, you know, it's kind of nice. Um, these are just different ways of dividing the data, like different ways of splitting it up. It's not that one is true and the other is false. It's that these are different ways of looking at the exact same data set and what, how do we group them? What do we think are the most salient features or the most salient way of grouping? Like, for David Kiersey, he felt that for the intuitives, the difference between feeling and thinking was the most salient feature. For the sensors, the difference between having a dominant extroverted perceiving function versus uh, a dominant or auxiliary extroverted perceiving function versus a dominant or auxiliary introverted perceiving function was the more salient feature. That the introversion or extroversion of sensing sort of took precedence over the feeling or thinking preference in the case of sensing types. That is his opinion. That is his way of grouping it. Can be a productive approach. It certainly was a productive approach for him. I mean, there have been many books written on it. I mean, many people use it. And it is an interesting way of approaching the data. Okay, how is Rob Zeke Colopy doing something different in attitudinal psyche? What is he doing differently? Well, he is not grouping together the temperaments by what is matched as much as by what is opposed. His temperament is sort of, um, he's adding four new ones. In fact, we shouldn't even call them temperaments. I'll call them sexta. That's his term. What is a sexta? It's not like a quadra. You know, it's not a combination of introverted and extroverted functions. And it's not like a temperament either. It's not a combination of intuition with feeling or sensing with thinking or sensing with feeling or intuition with thinking. It's not like that at all. What is a sexta? Basically, traditional Myers-Briggs and cog function groups only have two, two of the six sextas. So he's actually added four new ones. The two that they have are the sensing intuition sexta, which is either a lead sensing person uh, with inferior intuition or a lead intuitive with inferior sensing, and the thinking feeling sexta, a lead thinker with inferior feeling, a lead feeler with inferior thinking. So all of the types explored by conventional Myers-Briggs essentially fit somewhere in these two sextas, which is the opposition between sensing and intuition and the opposition between thinking and feeling. But he has four more sextas, intuitive feeling, intuitive thinking, sensing thinking, and sensing feeling. So they sound like our temperaments, but the difference is they're not the pair of these two functions grouped together. They're the opposition of these two functions in the inferior, the dominant and the inferior position, the first and the fourth slot position. See what I'm saying? It's like as if you could be intuitive dominant and feeling inferior, or feeling dominant intuitive inferior. That groups you in the same sexta. 
intuitive dominant thinking inferior, thinking dominant intuitive inferior. That groups you in the same sexta. And the same is true for sensing thinking and sensing feeling. So there are six sextas, which are six fundamental oppositions. Sensing intuition, thinking feeling, those are the ones, you know, and, and, and by the way, they include both ways. People who are lead feeling, inferior thinking, or lead thinking, inferior feeling, same sexta. So those are the two that we're familiar with from Myers-Briggs, from objective personality, from all the other cog function systems. And then he's added four more. Lead sensors, inferior feeling. Lead feelers, inferior sensing. That's another one. Lead sensors, inferior thinking. Lead thinking, inferior sensing. That's another group. And the same for intuitive thinking and intuitive feeling. So six sextas. They basically could be described as NS slash SN, TF slash FT, NF slash FN, NT slash TN, SF slash FS, and ST slash TS. And I'm putting the slash there to indicate that it could be in either order. It's not that they're dominant sensing inferior thinking. Uh, they could also be dominant thinking inferior sensing. And there's like this hidden affinity that Rob Zeke Colopy in Attitudinal Psyche is examining. And then within each there, uh, sexta, there are four types, and that's just from the permutations. So if you're looking at the sensing intuition sexta, that is lead sensing inferior intuition. And then they have second thinking feeling third or second feeling thinking third. Or the other way around, lead intuition inferior sensing. Right? It's, either, it's either dominant sensing inferior intuition or dominant intuition inferior sensing. And then the middle two switched. So you end up with four permutations for each of the six sextas a total of 24 types. That is the fundamental structure of the attitudinal psyche system. And I hope to be doing more videos on it soon. We will go into using its own terminology, but as mentioned, it's a little bit annoying because, you know, F is now sensing and L is now thinking and so on. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we can hang. So we will eventually go into doing some attitudinal psyche videos Using their terminology, for now, you can consider this a sort of structural introduction to attitudinal psyche for those who are familiar with other cog function systems.